An Oklahoma State basketball player collapses, dies after practice. Doctors say 22-year-old Tyreek Hoger had an enlarged heart, also known as athlete's heart. This condition more common than you might think, making this even more top of mind is that football practice for high schools across the state begins today, something we often talk about and something that isn't often caught but maybe could be prevented. We are joined now by Dr. Ryan Norris, a cardiologist here in the Metro. Dr. Norris, thank you so much for being with us. First of all, what are the warning signs for something like this? We've seen players just collapse on a basketball floor or on a tennis court. Right. So oftentimes there, there aren't a lot of warning signs. Sometimes it is just a, a death and that's what's really sad about this. But um, the, the things to really look for, the things that are absolutely abnormal are if you've got su uh, unexplained recurrent uh, episodes where you pass out. Okay. Uh, if you pass out uh, during exercise or very shortly after exercise, that's often, uh, also very uh, concerning. Um, lightheadedness during or after exercise, racing heart uh, out of proportion to what you might expect with the amount of physical exertion you, you, you have. Chest pain, again, uh, in, a young, in a young kid. Uh, adolescence uh, is not usually normal. And, and shortness of breath uh, that is out of proportion to what one might expect. The other thing too is if you've got a family history of people that die suddenly. So uh, usually when I see patients, uh, I ask them, have you had a family member who has uh, died suddenly or unexpectedly? Like, drownings or after they've been in a jog because a lot of times people don't think about you know cousin uh, dying suddenly so th those are huge warning signs family history for sure uh, and then those those other things that I mentioned okay so pay attention to that pretty closely also how prevalent is this is this rare so it depends on what disorder you're talking about uh, the most common uh, one that people refer to and, and again when people say the athlete's heart there's a difference between the athlete's heart and disorders that cause sudden cardiac death. So an athlete's heart can be enlarged and be normal, um, but uh, the thing that people refer to as being an enlarged heart is something called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. That exists in, in all ages, races, uh, and both sexes at an, a prevalence of about one in 500. Um, clearly not one in 500 people are dying, um, but uh, it is not as, as uncommon as, as you think, and, um, and I do think there are things that we can do to, to prevent, prevent people from dying suddenly. What are some of those things? Because if you're talking about chest pain and your, your heart is hurting and your heart's racing, at that point, is it too late? So, no. Uh, and that, this is, so this is controversial uh, and, and uh, um, not everyone can, can totally agree. But um, what I think can be done and has been done around other areas in the country and the rest of the world is screening electrocardiograms or ECGs. Uh, the, the controversy and the complication becomes that you have to find someone who's able to interpret that EKG appropriately. You can't just find any doctor, um, even some cardiologists. You so have to it's be able specialized. To, yeah, you have to have somebody who's had that specialized training and not all cardiologists and not all physicians have had that ability to be trained uh, on those ECGs. So uh, it's, it's more, you know, it's not only just mm -hmm. important to have the EKG, but also being able to find someone that's able to interpret it properly. And speaking of those specialists, you know, a lot of kids are about to have those back to school physicals before they can participate in sports. Uh, with athlete's heart, is that something that your doctor can pick up on by just listening to your heartbeat or you have to go to it, someone specifically specialized in cardiology? Typically would not be something you could pick up on just listening to someone's heart. They're, the American, Card Card American College of Cardiology and the AHA have a 14 point questionnaire, especially when you're suspecting Mm -hmm. uh, these things that you're able, you, you should go through and, and, and ask these questions and in, in addition to getting EKG. Um, and I think the one thing is that if you have a family history of these things, you absolutely need to be screened. You absolutely uh, need to find somebody and get to someone who knows what they're, what they're doing because that, that puts you at a, at a much, much higher risk. Are there types of athletes or a certain position maybe that are more at risk? I read that in football linemen because they are so big and tall and often maybe even a little bit overweight and they move so quickly that their hearts are often the most damaged out of anyone because their bodies aren't necessarily built for that and they're trying to move so quickly and they have so much pressure put on them is there a certain position where you would say you know a mom out there if your son is a defensive lineman you should you should really be careful or are there maybe a certain body type so that would make sense right but no unfortunately it's not okay. um, and it might be over time when you're talking about people long term, okay. so you know, later in life when they develop maybe um, structurally problems with their heart, so people that are you know have obesity or you know those sorts of things, they're at increased risk. But 
up front when you're young. Uh, unfortunately, no, there is no, there's no position. It affects everyone equally. It doesn't discriminate. And you were talking to our executive producer last week when we were setting up this interview. You said that in Europe, this type of screening is pretty typical. Why is that not the case here? Well, in the so States? there's one very specific area in Italy. So actually in Italy, it's a, the Veneto region of Italy. It's mm -hmm. a, it's a law. Uh, that all, they've been doing this for 25 years, that all uh, p uh, kids tw 12 to 25, if they're entering competitive athletics, uh, get an EKG, a history and physical, lung function testing, uh, and it's all done by a physician who's been trained in that specific area. And they've over 25 years reduced their incidence of, by 89%. Um, there's also um, uh, areas, like I said, in the, in the rest of the country. I was able to work with uh, someone in Chicago, uh, Joseph Merrick, who has a foundation called Young Hearts for Life. They've screened over 150,000 kids. They've reduced the incidence. There's areas like that in Texas, California. So um, the reason that it's not widespread is because, like I said before, when we're talking about those, those examples, uh, say, you're talking about small populations, mm -hmm. and that's the argument. It was Well, that's just one part of Italy. Europe has taken Italy's um, lead and, and uh, promoted this for FIFA. Um, the U.S. Olympic team has, has done the same thing. So, you know, it's uh, uh, for elite athletes, they're, they're doing these screens. Uh, for our younger people who are not such, so elite, um, that, that typically does not occur. Some, some NCAA programs do the same thing. But um, the reason it's not widespread is, like I said before, because uh, it's... Uh, uh, sometimes the prevalence is lower than they think. You have to have people that are able to interpret the ECGs. You have to have communities that are willing to accept. Uh, uh, a lot you goes know, behind uh, it. Yeah, there's a lot that goes yeah. behind it. Dr. Okay. Ryan Norris, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, and I know there are some groups and charities pushing to make this mandatory for every high school athlete, for every athlete out there, because one death is, is too many, quite yep. frankly. And, and like you said, though, you have to be very specialized. It can be very expensive. But a lot of groups out there pushing to make this mandatory. Thank you so much You're welcome. for thank your time.